this week, I see a cow. There was a cow. And you saw it with your own eyes. I eat a sheep. <laughs> it's good sheep. And I spend four days on board a train as I take Australia's longest train journey from one side of Australia to the other. On board the Indian Pacific. Well, a very good morning from the beautiful city of Sydney, one of my favourite cities in the world, I do have to say. Just look at this view, you can't beat this, can you? But nevertheless, it's a city that we've got to say goodbye to today because today I'm taking a ride on Australia's longest train journey. All right, so I'm riding the Indian Pacific today all the way across from Sydney to Perth on the opposite side of Australia. Super, super excited, looking forward to this. Here at Sydney Central Station, I need to go and check in like an airline flight, so let's go and um, get checked in. Oh, look at that. Good morning, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we can look after your cabin luggage. Okay. Um, but you need to collect it before you board the train. Right, okay. So if you take it to Julie, but just behind me here. Yeah, okay. So she'll tag it, and then you can board it. All right. We'll you it. All right, perfect. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Okay. The Indian Pacific travels the entire width of Australia from the Pacific to the Indian Ocean. Setting off from Sydney, it travels overnight across the Blue Mountains with a stop in the town of Broken Hill the following morning. From there it continues on arriving into Adelaide in the evening, where it sets off again late at night from Adelaide to start its mammoth journey across the Nullarbor Plain, travelling along the longest straight stretch of railway track in the world, where it goes for over 300 miles without a single curve. The last night spent crossing Western Australia before it pulls into Perth after a journey time of over four days and 2,700 miles. All right, so all checked in. Got my boarding pass. It's going to get me onto the Indian Pacific train. They've actually got HST trains here in Australia, like the old City 125s back in England. I used to love those trains. So, so cool. And they're still running them here. Um, I think they go down to Melbourne and places like that. But anyway, um, there's a lounge apparently. This is why we're here two and a half hours in front of the train. I was wondering why we'd be here two and a half hours before the train leaves. But apparently there's a lounge and we get served lunch before we even get on the train, which is quite nice. So um, yeah, let's um, go and go and get some lunch. Hello there, how are you? Have you checked in? Yeah, we checked in. This way, we've got a, we've got a bar, I'll say it all at once. Lovely. So we've got a bar here, we've got a coffee station on the right hand side. Okay, right. perfect, okay. thank you. Before you board the Indian Pacific, you wait in this private lounge area that's got a range of included food and both alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks as well as live music which is all pretty cool. But it wasn't too long though before it was time to head outside and get on board my train all the way across Australia. Alright, it is time to get on board the Indian Pacific for four days. Let's go and do this. So the Indian Pacific is split into three separate platforms here. It's the longest train physically as well as the longest journey. And it has like 30 or 40 carriages or something on it. It's crazy. So they do it split across three platforms because it, it will not fit. Hi there. You're with Ellie in carriage A. Yes. Amazing. Hello. Hi there. Hi, how are you doing? A16. Beautiful. And just in there on the left. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, let's go see if I can find my room. Oh, yeah, I get you now. Yeah. Stop. All right, this is me. Once everyone's on board the train, you get to watch all the sections being joined together. Being in coach A meant I'd end up being at the very back of the train, so the other sections all had to be moved to link together. This is the only train I've ever been on that's split across three platforms. <laughs> it's crazy. So we've been shunted in and out of the station to try and get us all lined up and all joined together for one massive train all the way across to Perth. <laughs> wow. Eventually all the sections had been linked together and it was finally time to start moving out of the station for our mammoth journey. All right, we are on the move. Four days starts here. Yay. So then time for a very quick room tour of the Indian Pacific and it will be a very quick room tour because it's not a very big room. But the thing I really like about this train is that the rooms are sort of 
curved, the corridors are curved, so the rooms therefore you've got a wide end and a narrow end, a bit like when you fly on a business class flight or something, how they sort of angle the beds and everything, and it's really cool. So the narrow end is down here, with the, there's two seats down here that fold out into a bed, and this is a single room, they've got double uh, like bulk rooms as well on the other side. Then we've got loads of storage, there's some in here, staff call button, we've got power sockets down here, we've got loads of little cubby holes and storages and things like that, we've got light switches up here, power sockets here, little cubby hole there to put stuff in and a little table just here that pops down and then we can have dinner and stuff on there as well, pretty cool. Then we go to the other side of the room and right over here we've got a sink with water, more storage here, drawers, cupboards, little bin under there, towels and things over there because we don't actually get a shower in the room here it's just next door in like a bathroom thing so it's a kind of a shared facilities we'll see how that goes after four days I'm sure it'll be okay we've got some more storage right up here where I've just got my bag and pillows and stuff are up there as well it is pretty nice quite spacious and I'd, I would say compared to the similar rooms on the Amtrak they're sort of just like a little cupboard with bunk beds in them. This is actually, with it having I mean, a curved corridor, you get like quite a little bit of room at that end, which is quite nice, really. As we wound our way through Sydney's sprawling suburbs, we started to climb up into the Blue Mountains, which were less blue and more grey and miserable today. The Blue Mountains, commonly thought to be called the Blue Mountains because they're blue, but actually no, they're not, they're just mountain coloured. They're called Blue Mountains because the people there swear quite a lot and use quite a lot of bad language, so that's why they call it the Blue Mountains, or so is my theory anyway. But regardless of the meaning behind the name, there really wasn't a lot of them to see this evening thanks to low clouds and fog shrouding all the mountains. But nevertheless, it was soon time to head down to the dinner car for my first meal on the train. All right, then it's six o'clock, which is my allocated time for dinner. So let's get down and get some dinner. The Indian Pacific has three separate dining cars, one for each section of the train. Mine was a few carriages down next to the lounge car which was a nice area to sit and relax with all the drinks included in the price. The lounge gets fairly busy after dinner so it's nice to grab a drink and take it back to your room. The dinner menu changes on every night so the first night there was a choice of beef, swordfish or vegetarian moussaka. I went for the beef which like every meal I had on the train was absolutely delicious. As we were eating dinner, it was incredible to see what I thought at first was another train, but in fact it was our own train, 35 carriages ahead of us, heading in the opposite direction, something that really messes with your mind. Well, that dinner was absolutely amazing. That is probably some of the best food I've ever had on a train. It tasted absolutely incredible. I've come back to my room and they've made up my bed for me, which looks pretty nice. I've got my head at that end, feet at this, and I think actually it pulls down from there. I think that's what the that handle was up there and it pulls down to make a lovely bed so I'm going to go and um, go to the bathroom I think and then get ready for bed they're saying that they want us up at six o'clock in the morning on South Australia times so it's half an hour behind anyway so yeah they want us up at 6 a.m in South Australia time to do this walking tour tomorrow morning and I'm thinking I might give that a skip tomorrow I might stay in bed a little bit later go and have some quiet breakfast and have a wander around Broken Hill because we're going to wake up tomorrow morning in Broken Hill it's a little, little mining town out in the middle of nowhere. That's the first stop tomorrow. And then we continue on to Adelaide in time for tea. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try and get some rest. I think we'll check out this bed, see what it's like. The next morning I woke up and it's fair to say it wasn't a brilliant night's sleep. I'm not from here. Oh, well, that was a pretty, pretty bouncy, bumpy night's sleep, I have to say. It's like 6 a.m. I think, quarter past six. We're just about to pull into the town of Broken Hill. But it, the railway line was so bouncy and bumpy overnight, so I was up quite a lot, but I still managed a few hours sleep, I think. We're gonna pull into Broken Hill soon, I think. There is like little 
walking tools and things you can do at Broken Hill, but I think I'm just going to have a little wander around myself because it's early in the morning, it's only just starting to get light, so yeah, we've got another full day today on the rails as we headed across. Well, we're not, we've not even left New South Wales yet, I have to say. We're nearly in Broken Hill, and then after Broken Hill, we're going to South Australia, so yeah. It's going to be a fun day, I think. One thing that did make up for the lack of sleep, though, was the scenery as we pulled into the mining town of Broken Hill. It felt like we stepped back in time over a hundred years as we wound our way into the tiny town here in the middle of the outback. It's time for the Noel Phillips Blue Review. Alright, so I figured I would use this time while we're in Broken Hill to come and use the shower facilities at the end of the carriage and give you a little bit of a loo review. And this is what the loo's like on the Indian Pacific. It's quite a nice bathroom actually. It's next right next door to my room. We've got like a shower there, there's a sink and everything over here hand basin and everything. There's a toilet over there, relatively clean, very clean, very nice and clean. And um, for, for a train toilet, it's quite spacious as well. So I'm gonna have a quick shower while we're stationary, or relatively stationary here in Broken Hill, and then head back to my room. Might even get off the train, have a little wander around if we can. Let's see, let's see how much time we've got here. That was the Noel Phillips Blue Review. <laughs> As it would turn out, unless you're getting off the train for an excursion, you're locked on the train here in Broken Hill, so I took the perfect opportunity to go and grab a coffee and breakfast while most people were off the train. The full breakfast was really nice, but as with any train journey, as the days go on, it starts running out of ingredients, so if you really want to try something, make sure you get it early on in the trip, because by day four, we were eating full breakfast without bacon. Right, so we're about to cross the border into South Australia from New South Wales. It's at a place called Cockburn, which is just there. We're nearly at Cockburn now. Um, so, yeah, we apparently we we're about to cross a border, but there isn't much to see to determine where the border is. So I'm using my little map. So when I get Cockburn, I know that I'm, I'm in South Australia. As it would turn out, Cockburn wasn't very exciting at all, and in a theme that would continue on this trip, we passed the border at some point with nothing at all to indicate we were now in another state entirely, and indeed another time zone. But in any case, now apparently in South Australia, we continued on across the outback with the scenery staying pretty much the same as it was in New South Wales. Miles and miles of nothing, the occasional windmill, and every once in a while the excitement of passing through a pretty little town. At one point I saw the highlight of the journey so far, this dust devil just outside the town of Two Wells. So we're just pulling into a place called Two Wells in South Australia. This is where um, one of the tours leaves from. If you're doing a tour of the Barossa Wine Valley, apparently people get off here, they go on a bus that sort of takes them all the way through and joins us later in Adelaide. But I'm staying on here because I'm getting off for my tour in Adelaide itself which is about the sort of half an hour to an hour's train ride after two wells. So yeah, nearly back in some sort of civilization anyway for this evening. We're going to get off, we're going to have some dinner when we get into Adelaide and go off to, I think I'm going off to a cheese factory, which is, um, yeah, so it sounds very fun, doesn't it? Let's go and, go and explore some cheese when we get down to um, Adelaide at least. To give you an idea of the scale of this train and just how long it is, the front of this train has gone into the station and just left the station to drop people off for two wells. We haven't even entered the town of two wells yet. We're still right on the edge, just there, and the train station is right in the middle. So literally the front of this train is in a different town to the back. <laughs> Incredible. The train is over a kilometer long, or about two thirds of a mile from the very front to the very back, and I'm literally at the back. <laughs> Crazy. Eventually though, excitement arrived as we started to see some actual buildings out the window, a train and even an airport, which could only mean one thing, it was almost time to arrive in Adelaide. 
Right then, welcome to Adelaide Parklands Terminal. This is the same train station that the Overland train goes from as well. It's another one of Journey Beyond's trains. So let me know in the comments if you want to see me do that train at some point. But now I've got a little trip to do, a little excursion, and we're off to a place called Harndorf to a cheese factory. Mmm, cheese. Hello, I think I'm doing the Harndorf one. Um, the cheese, the cheese thing. Lisa? Yeah, lovely. Thank you. I am the YouTuber guy. Yeah, I thought the hat would fall you. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have you done any bad flights lately? Yes. Last week. Ever flown Beeman Airlines? I've flown on them. Yeah, they were. They weren't too bad. I flew Beeman a few years ago. Yeah. They didn't have seat allocation. You just got on. <laughs> just got on. Is that what you like? Get him on a bus. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> I was on I was on Turkmenistan Airlines the other week. And what were they like? Terrible. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I watched a bit of you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that's it. Oh, no, that's great fun. So, no, yeah. you so, no, thank you. Because you do business class, you do cattle I try, class. I try to mix it up. Yeah, yeah. No, I see you mixing it around. Yeah, yeah. So, well, that's, that's the idea anyway. Oh, so. that's great. So, what are you doing when you're in hard off today, are we? Yeah, doing the cheese thing. You're doing the cheese thing? Yes. So, right. Yeah. Nice yeah, on, thank you. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go and sit down and let you count. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. The town of Harndorf is about a 30 minute drive from Adelaide. I have to say visiting a cheese factory wasn't my first choice of excursions on this trip, but the only other options were visiting markets and vineyards. And as I quite like eating cheese, I thought it might be fun until I got off the bus and realized I was probably the youngest person on the excursion. But nevertheless, the cheese factory was interesting and I got to learn a bit about how they make cheese and the fact that you can tell how nice a piece of brie is by squeezing it, who knew? Oh, that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I never knew there was quite as much to learn about cheese, but there we go. Anyway, we'll have to get some dinner now. Thankfully, dinner proved to be a little bit more exciting as we visited a German-themed restaurant where we were joined by the people who had been on the wine tour earlier. The food was pretty nice and I did have a lovely bit of sausage, but I do have to say, having spent quite a bit of time in Germany, I don't remember it being quite like this. After dinner it was time to head back to the train for my next night on the rails, but not before stopping to see one of Adelaide's most famous landmarks. Hello, how are you doing? How are you mate? Yeah, how are you? I don't know, everywhere I go these days I keep bumping into fans and this guy's been stalking me all bloody day. I've been waiting for years to meet this one. <laughs> so likewise, every time I come to Adelaide you bugger off somewhere oh, else. Oh, so, <laughs> I think we've missed each other five times. <laughs> I think something like that, yeah. But Mr Dennis Bunnick, how the devil are you? Fantastic. Good. Yeah, and much better for seeing you. Cheers. Thank you, yeah, cheers. Yeah, you've even, you've even brought lager look. Very pro proper hospitality. I've got to have to open mine, aren't I? Are we allowed to drink on the platform here, Dennis? We are now. Well. There <laughs> we go, cheers, mate. Cheers. <laughs> so how's your, how's your trip so far? It's fantastic so yeah. far, thank you. Yeah. I didn't sleep much last night. No. It's like going over a rocky road yeah, yeah. at high speed, but I'm told that tonight should be a bit smoother. Yeah. So we'll, we'll and you're see. about to cross the Nullarbor. I'm going to cross the Nullarbor, which apparently is the longest stretch of straight rail road in the world. I've driven it. I haven't taken the train. It's absolutely fantastic. Boring so as hell. Yeah, but the beauty is in the nothingness, <laughs> yeah. right? The, yeah. It is the dead flat there is nothing and there is nothing there. Yeah. there. I'm yeah. really looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to getting out to some of these tiny towns. They've yeah. got out there. I think we stop at a place called Cook, yeah. which is like a ghost town, and then Rawl in there, which is another little town. So I'm looking Fantastic. forward to that. So it's going to be awesome. Yeah. So yeah, there we go. Have a great trip. I will do. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm subscribed to Dennis. I'll pop a link on the screen. So yeah. thanks. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Hello. Hello again, you're right? Yeah, A16. A16. Yeah. Um, just so you know, we're doing a time change. Okay. So if you want to go two and a half hours backwards. Okay. Yeah, to Perth time. To so Perth time from yeah. now. Yeah, okay. from now. Yeah. Alright, thank you. Okay. Oh, my bed's been made. Look at that one. Did they get my note about the tap? Yes, they did. I left them a little note, ask them if I could please have some more towels because I, like an idiot, left them in the bathroom when I had my shower this morning and apparently I have to keep them so they give me some more. Yes. Right, they've made me bed up as well. Look at this, look, ready to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, that's me done for the day. <laughs> and I, I guess, well, yeah, we're going to move out of here soon, I think, and start heading across the Nullarbor. 
like the desert basically all the way across to um perth so yeah i'm gonna get some sleep because i didn't get any last night see you in the morning good night we pulled out of adelaide late at night as i fell asleep and then when i woke up we were in the middle of the desert well good morning from somewhere in south australia I think I had about the best night's sleep of this trip so far. Last night I slept for a full eight hours. I think I woke up briefly a couple of times, including one time I was having a dream where I was walking down the street and the whole world was shaking up and down and bouncing like that. And it wasn't, it was obviously the, the, the train in real life, a little bit weird. And that's the second time I've had dreams like that on this train. It's really weird. But anyway, we're out now in the middle of the outback. Oh, hey. A nine, ten hours train ride or something from Adelaide. We've gone past a place called Cooper Peddy, which is out there somewhere. And yeah, we've got nothing today, but nothingness. We've got two little towns to stop at, I think, in the middle of all this nothingness. But other than that, this is us for the day. So the other strange thing is last night when I got on the train, they told me that the train time is now on Perth time. So even though it's now quarter to nine in the morning well it's two and a half hours behind that time so actually the time right now it's not I think it's like not even six o'clock it's like six a.m. or something like that but it means it's breakfast time so I'm gonna go and get some bricky down in the breakfast car I think I've had my shower I got freshened up and yeah we've got another full day on the rails today looking forward to today because we're gonna to get to see some really remote Australia today which will be pretty cool I feel so we're now crossing the Nullarbor. This is now the world's longest straight section of railway track. 300 miles without a single curve now, all the way across the Nullarbor. And this is the view for the next 300 miles. Literally nothing but the odd rock or the odd bush. And that's it. Crazy, isn't it, isn't it amazing? You know, can you just imagine being stuck out here in the middle of nowhere. We've not seen any life for hundreds and hundreds of miles out here. The only life here, as far as we can see, is what's on this train. Obviously there is life of some description here. Every now and then we see bones of dead animals that have been left here, or the occasional snake that you see just sitting at the side of the track. That's pretty much it. There is nothing. I can't even imagine being stranded out here if, it, if you weren't on a train or something like this. It's just absolutely insane. And how far is it to the next place? Just crazy. I think at the minute on this train we must be some of the most isolated people on the planet as we go across this plane. And the nothingness just continued for hours and hours. Every now and then you see an animal carcass or a pile of rocks, but other than that, we didn't see a living soul until later that afternoon when we pulled into the abandoned ghost town of Cook, South Australia. Good day, too. Where's the view we're getting off? Uh, yeah, the missus is full. A16. A16, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, welcome to Probably the most remote stop on this trip that we've got. This is the town of Cook in South Australia. Population of just four. We are 300 miles from the nearest town, 60 miles to the nearest paved road, and four people live here just to service the trains that come through. It's pretty much an abandoned town, actually. It was a big major town on the railway a few years ago, but now there's literally nobody here. So let's go and have a little wander around the town. The town of Cook was built solely to service the railway. By the 1990s though, technology meant that trains didn't need the same amount of servicing as in the past, and by 1997, the town was all but abandoned. The Indian Pacific stops here to take on water twice a week, and other than that, Cook's a complete ghost town. So we don't have much time here in Cook. Literally, we've got 30 minutes while they refuel the train because this is all this place is used for now. It's just a refueling and a rewatering stop for the train. So we've pulled in for about 30 minutes. The population of this town is about 300 with people off the train. And as soon as we go again, it's back down to four again. The nearest doctor is a 12 hour drive, by the way, from here. So if you're here and you take ill, well, you're a bit screwed really because um, 
yeah, you've got a bit of a ways to go to get to the nearest docks. And how often do you leave people behind you? <laughs> Either intentionally or not. <laughs> I'll let you know later yeah, how yeah. annoying everyone is. <laughs> That's why we do a tick and flick. You don't yeah. want to stay here. No, I'm it's guessing there's not many, um, there's no Marriott's around here, I'm yeah, guessing. Right. So. <laughs> there's three residents in town. Yeah, all of them work for the railway. Yeah. Wow. I uh, was on the train once and next to me the train comes like a stop really quickly and um, there was a car on the side of the road and he was on top of his roof and he was waving us down and he was there for two days straight, no water and he just blew, all tyres were down to the metal yeah. and he um, just took a wrong turn, just kept driving to look to the train line but oh, he, like, he said like maybe 15 yeah. trains went by and they're like, no, nah, we're not bothered, they're on time train. Wow. They're like the Indian Pacific was coming through yeah. and we were the first train to stop and pick him up. Right, so we only stop here in Cook for 30 minutes and I do not want to be missing this train out of here because it's a bloody long way to the next town and it's a very long wait for the next train and I don't want to be sitting out here for several days <laughs> in the middle of the Australian desert. So um, let's go and get back on the train, get in the air conditioning because it's a bit hot out here as you probably expect being in a desert in the middle of summer. But yeah, let's go and get back on the train. I'll see you later then, mate. A16. Yeah, well, I feel that already. You've got the best spot here, haven't you? <laughs> Back on board the train, it was time for me to cool off as we continued on across the unrelenting Nalaba. You know, the craziest thing about being right out here in the middle of nowhere is that looking out there out the window, pretty much no human being has ever set foot out there. Aside from the odd people who come to work on the railway, for the most part out there, humans have never been. <laughs> Isn't that just crazy? Isn't that just crazy? And there's still life out here. This is the amazing thing. There is birds. I saw a kangaroo go past earlier. There's bushes. Life still happens even out here in the most inhospitable place possible. Isn't that just incredible? It's amazing. I headed down to the restaurant car for lunch and today I went for the camel curry which was actually pretty nice. As we were eating though there was some excitement as we approached the border with Western Australia. Welcome to Western Australia. Please drive carefully. <laughs> One of those big archways with balloons. <laughs> There's a sign coming up. There's a sign. And as far as our excitement for today went, well, that was pretty much it for a while at least. Well, until we came across this place. So we're just going past now a airport, strangely in the middle of nowhere. A huge airport with sealed runways and the works. This place called Forest. And it's there pretty much just to refuel planes and as an emergency landing space for planes to land when they're going across Australia. And that's it, there's nothing else here, just an airport. In the, in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> crazy. So we have literally seen now nothing but this out the window for seven hours today since I got up this morning. As we continued further west, yet more excitement ensued as I got my first glimpse of an cow. And then a bit later on, many more cows. Eventually we found ourselves pulling into our stop for dinner. Right, so as the sun is starting to set, we are pulling into the station of Rolina. Rolina is where we're going to get dinner under the stars. It looks like we should have a nice starry night tonight because it's a beautiful clear sky and we're going to be eating outside just at the side of the train. I've been looking forward to this bit for ages. I can't wait to see what it's like here at this tiny little place of Rolina. Hey, uh, A16. A16. <laughs> you nearly had it. You'll get it right by tomorrow afternoon. You'll be gone by then. <laughs> All right then, welcome to Rawlinna Sheep Station. This is the largest sheep station in the whole of Australia at 4,000 square miles. It's about half the size of Wales. And like Wales, it has an awful lot of sheep. 80,000 sheep to be precise. But we are gonna be eating a few of those tonight for our dinner because we're about to go and have a moonlit dinner under the stars when the sun finishes going down. 
Isn't this incredible? I mean, it's a lovely temperature here as well. It's not too hot either, not like Cork was earlier on today. It's about 30 degrees now, so nice and nice and chilled. Let's go and get some sheeps. Let's go and eat some sheeps. Dinner at Rawlin is cooked on the train and it's a lovely affair as you sit on the railway platform outside the post office eating your sheep. That is good sheep. Once the sun sets, she gets some amazing views of the stars in the night sky overhead before eventually having to get back on the train for the last night on board the Indian Pacific. Well, good morning from somewhere in Western Australia. It's now day four on the train. Night three, well, it was much like night one. I didn't get a great deal of sleep. It was really bumpy again as we moved into Western Australia. Um, but yeah, didn't get a lot of sleep. I was up at four o'clock this morning. It's now seven, so we now have some breakfast. But we, the good news is that we're getting some more civilization now. We're getting more farms and things coming up. We've seen some actual tarmac roads as well so this morning, which is pretty cool. And actual cars as well. I've seen a car this morning, which was pretty cool. I also saw a dingo, but I didn't get a video in time because it ran off. But um, yeah, that's um, that's where we are. I'm looking forward to getting into Perth. We're less than 100 miles from Perth now. Um, but we are not actually going to be arriving in until sort of 3 o'clock this afternoon, apparently, because we have to keep stopping for other trains all along the route now. I know it's getting a bit busy, but um, at least we have a cell phone signal, and at least we are starting to get back into some sort of, there's another road, starting to get back into some sort of civilization now. I'm really looking forward to getting into an actual hotel boat tonight and sleeping on a solid bed that isn't in the cupboard. Might be nice. I do have to say the last 100 miles of this journey though did seem to be the slowest. We started the day so close to Perth and we slowly wound our way through several towns in the area, stopping periodically for up to an hour at a time while we waited for freight trains to go past us. I really enjoyed my Indian Pacific adventure but by day 4 I was just looking forward to sleeping in an actual bed and being so close yet so far to Perth was, well, a little bit frustrating. But eventually we got closer to the city and before too long found ourselves crawling through the city of Perth towards the East Perth Railway Station. My ride across Australia cost me 1700 US dollars or about 1300 British pounds working out to a cost of 62 cents per mile which I thought was reasonable value for money for three nights all inclusive on the train. I booked it through Journey Beyond's website. Thanks very much, see you later, bye bye. See you later. Thank you, bye. Alright then, so four days after we set foot on this thing, we're on the opposite side of Australia. We've made it. I feel a bit of a sense of achievement, I think, after that. I feel even more of a sense of an achievement when I get to meet Uber in a minute and um, get across to my hotel. So um, yeah, let's go and get in an Uber and maybe try and get some sleep. an actual actual hotel 10 minutes from the train station in an uber but this is oh wow this is my room here at the pan pacific hotel in perth because i thought i'd stay somewhere nice given that i've just spent four days on a bloody train oh and they've left a bottle of wine in the room might take that home that might, might be nice to keep as a nice treat um, there's my view out over the beautiful roof I can see there's like a, hang on a minute, if you go up there, you can probably see there's a bit of a river behind there. And um, yeah, nice actual bed. Oh, this bed, you know what? This bed is bigger than the cupboard I was staying in on the train. It's bigger than the entire room I was staying with on the train, isn't that amazing? <laughs> and then let's have a look what else we've got. Big TV there, AC unit there. Oh, and a massive, massive shower area. And is it got a, Fancy toilet, yeah, fancy, nice toilet, nice shower, big, big shower. You have a party in here, couldn't you? Crikey. Anyway, there we go. Bucket list item ticked off the train, the entire width of Australia, across the desert of Australia. Absolutely amazing. I enjoyed that so, so much. It was an incredible experience. I really hope to come back because I want to do the GAN train next, which is one that goes from the top to the bottom instead of going left to right or right to left it goes top to bottom and the overland as well i'm thinking about doing very soon as well so if you want to see either of those drop me a comment down below and let me know 
what you think to that. In the meantime, I am going to go and get some sleep because I think I need it. And um, as always, thank you so much for watching. Take care, be kind to one another, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.